Okay. All right. Sounds good. So, hey, everybody. Uh, I am here with uh, my new friend and possibly kindred spirit, uh, Alexa Heinrich. She is a social media manager for St. Petersburg College. And here's a funny note for you. So, uh, I type down your name, your title, and your employer in a little sticky pad. St. Petersburg. Um, I put an H on it. <laughs> <laughs> because Pittsburgh has an H, so anytime I type Berg, by default, it ends up having an H now. That is funny, yeah. Um, I constantly have to check to make sure that I spell it right, because I type too fast, mm. and there's many instances where I just forget the S completely. Oh, really? So, that is funny. Well, that's actually fair, St. Peterburg. I mean, like, it, it just, it, that also rolls off the tongue, you know, like, doesn't sound too bad. Well, nevertheless, you're going to have to go back to uh, your your employers at the university there and um, get them to change the name <laughs> because this this podcast will no longer be uh, you know compatible with uh, or they won't be compatible with the podcast. And you know we need some continuity. I made a joke when I started there last year. Um, with, you know, the political climate and everything, I was like, oh, are we going to become a uh, Petrograd college? And they kind of, like, my coworkers are like, what? I'm like, never, never mind. No, no one listened to me. They didn't, they didn't get sorry. it. <laughs> no, I don't think it stuck <laughs> right away. My one coworker looked at me and nodded. I'm like, okay, he knows. He don't, totally knows what I'm getting at here. <laughs> um, but, but, yeah, so I've been there for about a year now. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, let's start at the beginning. So you're, you're the social media manager for, for St. Petersburg College. Um, you've been there for a year. Where were you before that? What was the, where'd you go to school? What did you do? And how'd you find your way into your present job? So I was previously the content marketing specialist for City Colleges of Chicago in Illinois, which is one of the largest community college districts in the country, it's the largest in Illinois. It's made of seven colleges. Mm -hmm. I worked for their district office marketing department. And the way City College is made up is it's one marketing department serving seven colleges and one district office. So it's it's a it's an interesting environment to kind of make your start in. And that was right. where I was immediately after college. I got my degree, I have a BFA in advertising art direction from Columbia College, Chicago. And then I started at City Colleges in the marketing department as a junior graphic designer. Cause I'm like, I'm gonna be a designer. This is my calling in life. Yeah. Um, I was a designer for about a year. I went to academic affairs for two years and I was their um, well, project coordinator. I, know, I had some weird made up title. And I kind of managed their catalog and their schedules, um, but I wasn't really doing anything creative. So I came back to the marketing department as a marketing rep. And my boss, who was newer to the department, kind of asked me, what do you want to do with this position? Like, I, I want to know what you want to do, how you want to mold it. And I said, I want the social media. I had previously applied for the social job and I didn't actually get it. Um, when I first applied for it several years before. Mm -hmm. So I said, I, I want the social media. And the communications department and marketing are split there. So she managed to somehow get the social media, get access to it. And I just kind of took off from there. I was like, okay, let's see what I can do from here. And that's how I started my like actual professional social media career outside of my personal life, obviously. Yeah, yeah it was kind of, it was a weird, it was a weird journey to, uh, higher education social media for me. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I also have had an unusual sort of journey to my present spot. And, you know, hearing hearing your story, especially with, um, with respect to you gaining access to the social media, you know, as it relates to that, I feel like someone didn't want it. Uh, and then they gave it to you. And of course, you picked the ball up and you ran with it and you're doing great work there. Well, I think that it was, they had someone previously managing it and then they left for a different organization and there was just this lull in yeah. between them and me, like a very significant lull 
where it was just kind of being shuffled between, do you have time to post this? Oh, should we post this? And kind of remembering if it existed, mm -hmm. whereas I wanted to, wanted to devote a majority of my time to it and have that be my main job duty, um, which is what I got. And I loved it. So I kind of built the social media presence up by the time I left last year, though know, all seven colleges had Twitter accounts, they active Twitter accounts, they had um, Instagram accounts, which was not a thing. When I started, there was a couple that did, they all had Facebook, like active Facebook profiles, and then they all had people at the college level volunteering to manage that social media so that I didn't have to do it all, so they were trying to do that. Um, so yeah, that was kind of how that started. And then I decided I don't want to manage seven college social media presence anymore right. um, or deal with snow. So I uh, applied for this job when I saw the opening and I got it after a couple of video interviews and moved down here last June. Cool. Uh, so I, your career Mm -hmm. is atypical with respect to like most of the people that occupy your role they don't have a design background so you bring an entirely different perspective to social media marketing and content generation and, and things like that what do you think how how does design give you an advantage in that respect that others lack for not having that design perspective well, I, I think I have the advantage advantage of if I need something design wise for a social post, I can usually do it myself um, and not only do it myself, but I can brand it correctly. I know the style for my college and what our content normally looks like. So I'm able to make sure that the pieces I develop are cohesive with what the creative team of the marketing department creates. Um, a big thing and I was just joking with um, she's my social media assistant and she's really excited because she's taking digital media classes this summer so she's learning about Photoshop yeah. and design and illustrator so I was joking with her I'm so excited for you to learn Photoshop so that if we get like uh, images that aren't the right. proper size you know how to resize them too so that's a big thing for me is like I know how to use Photoshop I can do it really quickly if something's not working properly which is, you know, a majority of social media is, is this image the correct orientation and size for this right. post. Right, and so the, on that note, like, I'm finding that a lot of our peers, um, if they don't have the front end with the design skills, they end up having to generate those skills on the back end after they've already been in their position. Whereas uh, with folks like us, we've already got the design up front, but on the back end, we're not doing a whole lot of training necessarily uh, on the comm or the marketing side. So right. I feel like if, if your entry point into social media marketing is more design focused, you actually may either have an easier time with it or an easier transition. And once you're settled, you don't necessarily have to generate new or a lot of skills or improve on them. Mm -hmm. um, versus if you came at it from a calm or just a marketing background. Is that similar to your experience or? Yeah, I would say that just learning like the strategy part of social media, it took me longer than taking like someone learning, having to learn the design part. Mm -hmm. um, I do have the advantage of, I do have an advertising degree. So right. at least I was somewhat aware of like the market and audience and engagement and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but the uh, you know the, the Facebook group for higher education social media has been invaluable to me because there's been stuff brought up in there that I'm like I would never mm -hmm. think of that or dream that up. So it's kind of nice to connect with our peers in higher education social media that way and see what everyone else is doing because it shows me the skills that I need to brush up on or the things I need to explore more. Yeah. And, you know, one thing about that group is how wonderfully diverse and mm -hmm. um, multidisciplinary it is. Um, I feel like every, every person I've talked to on this podcast, you know, they have all approached, for those that are doing social media marketing, um, they all approach it from completely different 
uh, entry points. They're not all designers. Sometimes they're not even comms people. Sometimes right. they're just they're academic advisors or, yeah. you know, they, they have no marketing training necessarily and they just kind yeah. of migrate into it. So I, I love the diversity of that because it allows folks like us to, to learn new things or improve on what we already may know. Mm-hmm. And then I'd say the final part to that is we get the opportunity to teach other people what we know, which is very gratifying for me. Yeah, no, same. I, I think as, I mean, you know, as part of like my social media career, I love educating others about like accessibility with social media. And that's become more of a thing since we've all moved online. So it's something that people don't necessarily think about and it's kind of it's interesting to see who in like our big group on Facebook wants to learn about that or they already know about that and they're already implementing that on the flip there are people that have told me recently like yeah I've been double checking our university social media and see how we do for accessibility because of what you put out there and what you teach us so that's been that's been really gratifying for me because I want more people to know about that and there could always be more accessibility advocates. Yes. Yes. Always, uh-huh. always, always. And I'm always telling people because I've gotten a couple com- uh, comments before about, oh, you must know someone who's blind or deaf. I'm like, no, I, I don't actually. Um, and I don't have a vision impairment or a hearing impairment. I I just care. And that's how it should be with everyone. So you don't. It's that kind of that mentality of think of your mother, think of your daughter when it comes to women's rights that people say sometimes is you don't need to have a sensory impairment to care about this sort of thing. We should all be making that effort, especially with marketing. The whole point of marketing is you want to reach as many people as possible. So why wouldn't you be taking these steps to make your messages more inclusive for everyone? Why make something that talks to mostly everybody mm-hmm. and versus everybody? Exactly. Right? Uh, in total. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on there. Um, you know, I, I've been teaching web design for the past 10 plus years, still teaching it. And accessibility is a big part of, you know, teaching designers you know, how to build a website. It isn't, and you know, they, the, the graphic designers get discouraged a bit because they realize like, yeah, we need to make something that's accessible and uh, responsive and accessible on a responsive format. Right. And they're like, I don't want to do web design anymore because it's too production heavy. And, and I have to tell them like, when you're in the field, you won't necessarily be building these things from the ground up. Like there are developers that do this. There are accessibility specialists that do this. No one wants to necessarily hire a graphic designer to build an enterprise based web solution, right? You do the front end. So you need to be aware of the accessibility concerns as it relates to the visuals and then right. Once they kind of on that understand that that relationship, the paradigm changes positively. Right, and I always tell people, you don't have to be perfect when it comes to this stuff. I the goal is progress, but you know you may not be good at designing accessibly, but understanding why it's important and how it works, I think, is a good goal to have. And plus, um, on Global Accessibility Awareness Day on Thursday. Adobe actually launched their inclusive design site, which is really exciting. So they're going to be making more of an effort to be um, inclusive with the products they put out and how they're used and educating people. So that was exciting for me because I actually used Adobe Spark for my own website. So I'm like, yes, give me alt text that for my website. It's a single web page. I just want to put alt text on the images. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's exciting. So hopefully more people start thinking about that, especially for like social media, because it's really easy to do that stuff. Right. It's, it's not difficult at all. Um, mm-hmm. But it's the fact that it's, it's production centric, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, great, another layer of work. Right. And, you know, I think once people start to realize that they're actually being exclusionary and counterintuitive to their mm-hmm. actual goals, like that will hopefully flip. You know, I'm actually kind of waiting for like AI 
to, to take a, a handle on, especially like alt tags and stuff like that. Um, well, face, I mean, for Facebook and Instagram, if you turn on your voiceover function on your phone and try to read any image for Facebook and Instagram, I mean, unless it's mine, which obviously has alt tags, but the AI that's built into Facebook and Instagram automatically tries to generate a description, but it's usually like super vague. So you could post a picture of a beach and what you would get from Facebook is beach, sky, water. So it's trying, but it's not a very uh, sophisticated way of, right. of painting a picture for someone who can't necessarily see this image. Well, for so me, I'm, I'm descriptive about what I'm describing. So. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rudimentary in that respect. Yeah. And I'm so glad you mentioned the telling a story aspect to it. You know, one of the things that, you know, I, I had used to, to do on like websites that I would build is I would have some fairly descriptive alt tags, you know, and it would, it would tell, it would, in some cases, it would yield the context of the photos that were being scanned, basically. And those were contexts that were not included in the body copy. So I always mm -hmm. liked the aspect of it, just taking the story a little bit further. And, yeah. and those alt tags are accessible by, by everyone. So, yeah. you know, if, you, if you're curious enough to just hover over an image and then that yellow tag pops up, you could actually get more information from it and continue that narrative. Plus for alt text on, on websites, I mean, the whole, the whole point of alt text originally for websites was if your images didn't load, the right. alt text was supposed to pop up and tell that person, well, that this is what was supposed to be here. Sorry. But um, also something that people don't necessarily think about is that alt text can also play into SEO for your website. Mm -hmm. So if you properly tag your pictures with the right alt text, it, it can, you know, you, it can render better results for SEO, supposedly. I don't know if that's 100% true, but that's what I've heard about alt text because it's just more text on your website. So if you right. have keywords built in there. Um, switching gears, and I'm curious, are, are you paying attention to anyone else in higher ed marketing, higher ed social marketing um, that is an ad accessibility advocate at, at your level or or beyond or perhaps below um there i know there's a couple people that just joined the facebook group not too long ago who are accessibility experts i have to go back and look but um the social media manager for notre dame uh just recently told me that she's really tried to make more of an effort with their social media and being accessible um, because of you know stuff that I put out there, which I really appreciate because I think Notre Dame does some amazing yep. social and this individual, she's just, she's so good at what she does. So that was really flattering to me because I really like the content that she produces. So for her to tell that to me, I was like, oh, thank you, flattering. <laughs> Flatter. um, uh, not higher education, but I know that Sprout has been trying to do more stuff, Sprout Social, around accessibility, which I really appreciate. I just, I, again, I feel like more people are thinking about it since a majority of us have moved all of our work online because of the right. pandemic. So that's, it's just really nice to see. And then um, uh, John Steven Stanzel, I, I, I think that's his last name. I might have botched that completely. But uh, oh, no. he's... Is. what he said I think we all know who he is yeah I would hope so I love him and he does a really great job um supporting what I say about accessibility but you know he encourages others to do the same thing so I I appreciate that um yeah I feel like everyone started to make more of an effort which is amazing and I mean if you're good social media strategist, you should be planning your content out ahead of time. So there's not really an excuse to say, well, one more step. Right. It's not one more step if you're actually planning your content out. So it's even in pandemic, when we're all stuck at home, I'm planning my content out ahead of time because it makes my life easier. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, um, I advocate, advocate for that as well, because it takes, you do a lot of work on the front end, but it, you know, you build that pattern 
you repeat it, it and scheduling things gets easier over time. Yeah. Um, plus you're not caught off guard. You know, there are no surprises necessarily. You know, quick shout out to John. You know, if you have not been on his podcast yet, Alexa, <laughs> you know, hint, hint, John, you know, bring her on board. <laughs> Uh, she's the go-to resident accessibility expert. So uh, hopefully, he, he did reach out, but it wasn't oh, for higher education. It was for when I did my like super um, obsessive audit of all the Democratic candidates and who was doing using accessibility um, with their social media. And I was like, "Come on, guys, we have to be better about this." Um, he did reach out about possibly writing for his blog and doing like a breakdown of each candidate and then boom, pandemic. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, was the, that was all that. But yeah, we have totally had private conversations about accessibility. So that's why I think he's great because he's so supportive of it. Get on his podcast and share that story and I'll definitely tune in. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I'm curious, uh, where, do you, where do you see yourself in, in higher ed marketing? Where do you want to go? What are your goals? Are you satisfied with where you're at? Or do you want to elevate beyond that? Or what are, your, what are your thinking here? I really like what I do right now. Um, but I, would, I guess I would love to say that I, I want to add on to that. Mm -hmm. I, right before the pandemic, it's always going to come back to right before the pandemic. Oh, right? the pandemic. Blame it on everyone. <sighs> Um, I was scheduled to speak about digital accessibility at my very first conference, and it was a conference that uh, the college I work for actually jointly hosts, but they bring in, it's not just for St. Pete people, they bring in people from around Pinellas County, from around Florida to, um, it's called Moving the Needle, so it's, it is focused on higher education and how we can better serve the community, our students. So what are we missing basically? And I pitched uh, digital accessibility mm -hmm. because we do have students who have hearing impairments and vision impairments. And I feel like we're missing a step there. So just like higher education in general. Um, so I pitched that and I got approved and I was really excited and it was supposed to be the first week of April. And that obviously didn't happen, but I would love to break into the conference uh, world essentially so that I could speak about this because I love obviously talking mm -hmm. about it a lot and I really got fired up last fall I went to a digital summit in Tampa and her name is Carmen Collins she works for Cisco she is an outstanding advocate for digital accessibility she gave this really fun presentation on social media accessibility specifically mm -hmm. and I was like sitting at a table with my coworkers, like oh my god oh my god she gets me she gets me <laughs> reached out went up to her she was the only presenter that I like actually approached afterwards and I was like I loved your stuff I was totally fangirling and then I was talking about alt text and she's like yeah I just wish it was like easier to do it on Instagram you have to post it first and then go back and I'm like no 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 there's a way to do it and I showed her how to do it she's like you just taught me something I'm like oh my god so <laughs> I would love to you know find a way to get to you know to do these conferences to do speaking appearances stuff like that um and teach other people about digital accessibility I have noodled over finding ways to do it myself from my house <laughs> but um I just I really like teaching people about it because it's it's an easy topic to talk about and it's right. so important important and usually people are really receptive to learning about it so that's definitely something that I want to do more of but I, my position at the college I would not change for anything I love going out onto campuses we have like 11 learning sites around the county mm -hmm. and I love to go to all of them I love mingling with students and doing all the fun stuff but I am known for being goofy and doing just about anything I have to do to get good content um, I get on the floor, I take my shoes off and shuffle around in SBC socks for good content. Whatever I need to right. do is strap a GoPro to my head and get in a go-kart. So I love doing all that stuff. And Yeah, you're not extroverted at all. 
I'm actually not. I am an introvert <laughs> with a very bold personality um, that I use as a defense mechanism. So. Honestly, is it, is it one of those things where like you have to turn it on mm -hmm. and then, you know, once you're in that mode, you go and then when you turn yeah. it off, like you have yeah. to rest. And, and I, I have to say, I adore my boss because she's, she's a great manager, but she also seems to instinctively know when my energy is running low. Like, yeah, I could go for several more hours, but like mentally I'm, I'm crashing and I'm crashing hard and she's really good about yanking me back um, and just telling me, take a second, you're fine. Like you're putting out good content, just take a day. So yeah, I, I have mad respect for my supervisor because she's really good about that. So, and it's only been a year, but she, she just knows when I need to recharge. Hey, you know, when, when you're a fit, you're a fit. I mean, mm -hmm. and when everything clicks together, then, you know, time, time is irrelevant, you know? Um, yeah. So you, you brought up uh, some really good things that, that I'm interested in with respect to personal and professional growth. So I'm excited to hear that you want to hit the conference scene and, and really teach people about accessibility. Like you have something that you want to communicate. You're developing the experiences necessary to be a proper, uh, you know, uh, communicator on the topic, but also um, a leader on it, you know, and um, since I became staff side, one of the things that I'm finding, especially with staff side marketing is that, you know, some people do the job, and then they go home, and that's fine. Uh, I have not encountered too many people that want to do the job and more. So I just on my observations, like I want, I want folks like us to have more pride in their work, not saying that they don't have pride, but um, more pride in their work with respect to what they're doing can teach something to someone, what they're doing can impress other people or be inspiring. So like talking to you and seeing how passionate you are about accessibility, you know, that's going to hopefully fundamentally change some of the practices that I utilize in my job. Did I lose you? Mm -hmm. Okay, there you are. Wow, your face was like completely yeah. frozen. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, I, I just got the like, your internet connection is unstable. I know, okay. I know right. it's unstable. Um, well, anyway, you know, uh, folks having enough pride in their work that they're confident enough to go to conferences and talk about it. And um, that really resonates with me. I, I'm drawn to those people because they believe in their work, they're confident in it, but they believe that their work can be transformative for other people. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I personally am not seeing enough of that. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because I'm coming from a completely different worldview into this new one where in my previous life as a faculty person, you know, it seems like most professors feel like they all have something profound to say that would change the world. And in most cases, they don't. Um, so nevertheless, like I'm interested in doing the conferences and, you know, even submitting work to competitions and getting recognitions and honors for that work. We should be just as ambitious. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, I want to see more of that and and by virtue of you being such a, a strong advocate for accessibility i think you're helping charge that up yeah well and i and i think when it comes to social media i mean our jobs never get turned off my right. phone lights up at all hours and i think it's important to have something about you know social media that you are a nerd about like i am a total nerd about accessibility because i think it's important but it also keeps me passionate about my job so i'm not really i'm not worried about feeling burnt out about being a social media manager ever um i just came out of you know the first two and a half months of this pandemic and i still absolutely love what I do. Granted, I have a phenomenal team in my department that 
again, we all check on each other, but because I'm passionate about this aspect of social media, it just, it keeps me driving forward. Um, and I, I think it's important for everyone to have a voice about it. Because again, I don't have a hearing impairment. I don't have a vision impairment, but I think it's important that, you know, there are allies that speak up about this. So, which is why I was putting out all that content on Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Like, again, I don't have a sensory impairment, but I can speak intelligently about why this particular topic is important and that more people need to care about it. Absolutely. So two, two uh, kind of questions, mm -hmm. two questions here that I was kind of interested in, both future tense. So where is accessibility at in five years? God, I hope it's, I really hope it is just like people don't even think about it to the point where they're just doing it. Like you should just be doing it. I'm trying so hard. It was, I pointed out earlier today that I noticed that like Instagram, like the account Instagram doesn't use its own accessibility features on the app. Um, it relies on the AI system, which is yeah. not good. But I'm hoping that, you know, the platforms will all be pushing accessibility more. Um, Twitter has an accessibility a side account that they put content out more. And I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, all the platforms will kind of follow suit of this is what you should be doing when you're posting content. This is a best practice for, you know, marketing. This is a best practice for communication professionals, stuff like that. That's, I, I hope it just becomes second nature for everyone to know, okay, I got to go put a post on Instagram. got to make sure that I have the right alt text on there. People aren't posting flyers no, on Instagram no. anymore. A whole other episode. Yeah, but, but also the same thing. I hope that, you know, Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook all figure out how to make their stories accessible. You can't, there's no way to add all text to stories. There's, there's just no way to do it. And it drives me nuts. Um, so yeah, I hope that's something that they think about. So second question, where is mm -hmm. social media marketing in five years? We're the highest people, highest paid people in marketing. That's where. I see it happening. <laughs> um, I... I always say when I present to students about social media, because I try to give presentations at the college about how to use your social media professionally and what it should look like when you're job hunting. I always explain to the students, I don't have a degree in social media marketing. And most of the people in my field who are my age or older fell into it or did some weird adjacent transition in their career where they came into it. And in five years, you're going to see a lot more uh, young marketers who are like, yeah, I have a bachelor's degree in digital and social media from such and such university. Cause there are lots of universities and colleges who are offering degrees. So I think that's going to be a much bigger thing. Um, I don't think it's going to make what current social media managers any less important because a lot of us do go and get, you know, certifications and get master's degrees and this stuff. But I do think you're going to see a lot more people who are actively out of high school trying to start uh, social media degree programs at colleges. So I think that's going to be a big thing, but just more people understanding that I am not just on Facebook all day. Like right. I'm, I'm not, I always say I'm not a service. I'm a strategy. Um, I should be part of the strategy from the get go, not just a backup plan right. when you don't get the initial results for whatever you're trying to promote the first right. time around. So that's, that's where I'm hoping we shift to is, marketing should be valuing social media the same way it values email marketing or your website or doing print materials or anything like that. I That's agree I completely. I can't mm -hmm. even add to that. So I'll switch the conversation. Uh, 
So uh, we're getting towards the end of our time together, and I wanted to ask you your thoughts on this. So uh, the the basic premise of of this podcast really is what do recent graduates, undergraduate students whom have either had internships pulled away from them, job offers rescinded, or jo- any kind of opportunities, career opportunities outright canceled. What can uh, these folks that are fired up and ready to start their careers and hitting this wall, this false start, what can they do to develop the professional experiences that they need to move forward after the pandemic sort of lifts? Um, I think a big thing is just keep putting yourself out there. Uh, so- social media is, I mean, the perfect tool for that. Mm-hmm. That's how I've gotten a lot of my following is I just, you know, I'm always putting content out there. I write articles on LinkedIn. I write articles on Medium. I'm always, I'm still designing. Um, I'm just constantly putting myself out there. And not only that, but I try really hard to engage with people that, maybe above me in their success or their career or their pay or whatever, but trying to engage with those people and just make myself noticeable. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing that anyone can do in my past life. When I was in college, I was a big hockey fan. I ran a website where I was designing for hockey. I had a whole Twitter devoted to it. I was constantly like, trying to interact with NHL players to the point where I I had one player who bought some of my shirts. Nice. Um, he followed me on Twitter. He thought, I, yeah, I, he thought what I did was, was really cool. He was super nice. Um, and then I got so ingrained in the hockey community as a designer that uh, – there's an organization that used my designs as part of the Canadian Olympic committee. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah, it was really cool. And I got to watch all these NHL players wear my design in Toronto pride, which is one of the biggest pride parades in in the world. Um, So yeah, just keep putting yourself out there no matter what. I mean, that should not stop. Social media is networking and networking no matter where you are in your career is something you are going to do all the time it doesn't matter if you're like yeah i'm ceo or whatever you should still be networking because you never know when one of those connections is going to become vital to your existence i agree uh that was fantastic and you know one thing that i think maybe some recent graduates are a bit hesitant to do is to really kind of make them the stars of their own story And, you know, to your point, like you're producing a lot of content, a lot of good, meaningful, thoughtful, researched content, and that represents you, you know, you're making, you're driving your own story forward and that is paying dividends. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think a lot of recent graduates may feel like they don't have anything to contribute in that respect when really I think they do. And in fact, like if, if they're looking for, opportunities that are valid and authenticated. There's, of course, so many small businesses that are suffering right now, same with nonprofits. I mean, there are people out there that need their help that also do not need to meet with you in person, especially on the social media side. So, you know, the same options for the most part are still available that were there before the pandemic. Yeah, and I I, I agree. Like, be proud of who you are and the content you put out and don't don't be afraid to kind of make your own spotlight for yourself I mean you know me I put selfies out there and I just refuse to be kowtowed about about oh you shouldn't put so many selfies I like my face I like the content I put out there right. who cares it's my social media so be proud of who you are and you know just be ready to collaborate with other people awesome so uh, how can folks get a hold of you if they're interested in learning more about your work um, and also accessibility? How can they find you? Sure. I am on Twitter as hashtag Hey Alexa. That is quite literally the at symbol hashtag the word Hey Alexa. Um, you can also find me on Instagram, Instagram at the same handle. And then I'm on LinkedIn as Alexa. Heinrich. Um, I'm always open to people asking me questions. 
I get tagged all the time with different accessibility questions, which I love. Um, and I'm not afraid sometimes to say if I don't know the answer. I like to do the research around this stuff and keep educating myself. So that's a big part is to keep learning. But yeah, I am more than happy for people to reach out and ask me whatever they want to know. Cool. Well, thank you very much. This was awesome. And I look forward to uh, doing this again with you because in that conversation, we will talk about typefaces and design <laughs> trends and faux pas and whatever else. Uh, so that, so I'm looking forward to that. But uh, thanks again. This was great. Thank you. This is awesome.